The final smart instrument we're going to take a look at here is smart strings. Now, smart strings didn't originally ship with the first release of GarageBand. It came with an update in March 2012. So if you purchased GarageBand before then and haven't yet updated, make sure you go to the App Store and update so you'll see smart strings appear when you open GarageBand. And what smart strings does is it gives you an entire string section right here in your iPad. As with the other smart instruments, you'll see eight chord strips here in the interface, and here they're all divided into four sections. And you can play these a number of different ways. Tapping in a chord strip gives you a pizzicato sound. The four different sections of the chord strip give you different inversions for that chord. You can also slide your finger along the chord strip like a bow. The more intense you slide, the louder the sound will get. And you can use this technique to create swells in the music. The more you slide, the more intense it'll get. If I stop, it'll start to decay. And if I slide again, it'll come back. Where you start sliding also determines the chord that's being used. So if I started down here, we'll hear that. If I started up here, we'll hear a different version of the chord. You can also do fast slides across the chord strips for more staccato bowing sounds. And again, where you place your finger when you do those swipes is going to affect the sound. So there you have three different ways you can play the smart strings, and you can combine them all together. So the iPad's touch screen really gives you a unique tool to create these string sounds. This is something you definitely couldn't do with a computer keyboard or a mouse. You can't dynamically rub your mouse up and down on your mouse pad like this, but you can do it here on the surface of the iPad. Now, you might have noticed across the top of the screen here, we have the instruments that are divided into violin sections, violas, cellos, and basses. You can actually tap to disable or re-enable any of these that you like. So for instance, if I only wanted a cello part, I could just make sure cello is highlighted, and now I'm only hearing the cello. I can still tap the different regions. I have the same ability to play staccato strikes or long bowing actions. And if I need to, I just bring in more instruments, maybe cello and viola. So you can create some really unique sounds this way. As with the other smart instruments, you can switch between playing chords and individual notes. If I tap notes, again, I see a fretboard here. And right now I'm looking at the cello. So I can play a cello. I can swipe through and find maybe the violin for totally different sounds. Now, we can play this one of two ways. I can play the strings like this. But if I hold down over here, notice that highlights, I can use this then to pluck the strings. Or if I do want to bow while holding this down, if I want to do a combination of plucking and bowing, I just hold down on the string, you'll see that little vertical line appear, and then I can bow across the strings this way. So we can do a combination of the two that way. And again, it's just a matter of choosing which instrument you want to play this way. Also, as with the other smart instruments, you can tap the scale button to limit the notes just to certain scales that you select. For instance, I'll choose the maybe minor pentatonic here. This is especially useful with fretless instruments like this. If you're a little worried about getting the note a little bit sharp or flat, now you don't have to worry about it. You're only going to play notes that are within that particular scale. I'll switch that back to the full fretboard. And of course, since this is a smart instrument, we have the autoplay feature available. I'll switch back to chords. We'll find our autoplay dial. And again, we have four different positions we can place it in. So it's just a matter of moving the dial. And as before, you can get variations on the different autoplay patterns by tapping with one, two, or three fingers. Now, 
not only do you get those three variations within those four autoplay patterns, you can also drastically change the sound of what's being played by going up to the cinematic button, and here I can choose from three additional styles. So for instance, right now if I play a D minor, I hear this for cinematic, but if I change it to modern, I'll hear this. Here's pop. And romantic. And again, within each of these four different styles, you can still move the autoplay dial. And get different variations. Now these different styles not only apply to autoplay, but if you have autoplay off, you'll still get different voicings between, say, cinematic and modern. So even though it's the same chord, you still get different voicings. And if that's not enough for you, you can also incorporate the idea of bringing in different instruments at different times. So maybe I'll have autoplay on, and I'll start with just my first violins. and gradually add in the other instruments. So that's Smart Strings. It's a great tool for adding depth and a unique tone to your music. Even if you're primarily recording guitar music, adding some strings underneath there can really take your songs to another dimension.